130 years ago, a clan called the Silent Knights first appeared in this world. Due to their appearance, the world became filled with wars, and thousands of innocent lives died. The world became dark, and everyone one by one began to lose hope of life. One day, the martial arts experts finally decided to create a new clan called the Central Heavenly Alliance. Silent Knight continues to carry out massacres and wants to rule the world. Because of this, the Central Alliance finally intervened by creating another clan called the Central Heavenly Alliance, and one of the strongest people in history leading the clan was named Book ji -Hu. With the strength of the Central Heavenly Alliance, then the movement of Silent Knight could be stopped. The Central Heavenly Alliance has four pillars. Apart from the leader, there are four main pillars. They are also very strong and possess very great abilities. But after years of being able to suppress Silent Knight, suddenly, Silent Knight brought together experts from all over the world to destroy the Central Heavenly Alliance. And one unexpected thing was, the four pillars of the Central Heavenly Alliance betrayed and supported Silent Knight. At that moment, the leader of the Central Heavenly Alliance had finally disbanded the clan, and he was cornered with no way to win. He is seriously injured. But at his last moment, Book ji Hu asked the Silent Knight clan not to touch his son, and he did Harakiri as a soldier's honor. Son of the strongest man of the Central Heavenly Alliance clan, named Jin Muwan. Seeing his father die before his own eyes, he lost Jin Muwan, huh? The Central Heavenly Alliance's clan was destroyed, his father and mother also died, and only the words, I'm sorry, passed from his father's mouth for the last time. Three years have passed since that bitter incident. Jin Muwan is living alone, and he is still living in the ruins of the former clan of the Central Heavenly Alliance that had collapsed. But every day, there are always people watching his every move. This was because the Central Heavenly Alliance's legendary treasures and martial techniques were nowhere to be found. That is, techniques that made the entire world tremble. But unfortunately, that technique had not been passed down to anyone, not even to his son, namely Jin Muwan. So they were always monitoring the ruins of the Central Heavenly Alliance for the Central Heavenly Alliance's ancient martial treasures. Jin hasn't been taught martial arts by his father at all. What an irony. The whole world is even afraid of a child who doesn't have any martial skills, just because he is the son of the strongest person. They were all afraid of him plotting revenge, so watching him every day was the most appropriate solution. Jin's daily life is very bleak. Every day he only eats dry rice or dry meat just to survive. His days are used to pensive on the tiled roof like regretting why he had to be born. When he was free, he also studied blacksmithing and that was fine with the supervisors. Blacksmith skills are used to make swords and sell them to be able to buy some side dishes and rice. Every day, he kept doing the same thing for three years, pensive on the roof tiles, eating, sleeping, and making swords. This irritated his overseer and tortured him into opening his mouth and saying, where is that martial treasure located? They have all searched but found nothing at all. There are only ruins, but no one knows where the treasure is not even the four pillars of the Central Heavenly Alliance. Those martial records were located throughout the clans of the Central Heavenly Alliance, meaning that all of the Central Heavenly Alliance's buildings and courtyards were ancient martial records. To see clearly, then sitting on the loft where Muwan roosts every day is the most appropriate point for more than three years. Jin Muwan continued to study the legendary martial arts technique. He remembered Jin Muwan, yes and planted it deep into his head. He doesn't spare to miss a word, always getting food supplies from Huang Chul, who was his father's former confidant. He's even always been loyal to Jin Mawoon until now. Sometimes Uncle Huang or Huang would come and go for months. But after that, he came back and brought food supplies for Jin Muwan to survive. When he returned home from his usual activities, suddenly a woman who was seriously injured in his room was a Jin, and he fainted saw a woman fainted and injured because of poison, he had no other choice. Jin used his last medicine to cure the poison and took care of the woman for three days until he finally regained consciousness. After realizing it, it was finally discovered that the woman's name was Yun Haseol. Her identity was not yet known. In each of his activities, he always applied the heavenly legendary martial theory, but he was very careful to train it so that no one would notice it. Now he can feel all the movement in the area around him like hockey. 
Sometimes he used his sword secretly and practiced slashing it, but without realizing it, it turned out that Haonsol's slash was so powerful that it made the snow shift with a large enough area. Sometimes Jin Muwan eats with the woman he saved, but Jin Muwan doesn't ask the woman anything about who she is. He thought it was better not to know anything about the woman to help her sincerely. Jin continued to study the swordsmanship of the Central Heavenly Alliance like a technique aimed at killing. Then, as time went by, Jin Muwan and the woman became more and more familiar, they ate together more and more, joked together, and they were like friends or maybe more than that, and suddenly a group of people came to the Central Heavenly Alliance. They were the Central Heavenly Alliance. In a line, the Central Heavenly Alliance was a branch of the Heavenly Center. The people who came there are called the Four Dead Heavens. The Four Dead Heavens are said to have come to the Central Heavenly Alliance to restore the glory of the Central Heavenly Alliance, and they also met Jin Muwan as well as this woman. Jin introduced himself and also said that this woman was a distant cousin who had come to visit. A man who is one of the Four Dead Heaven came to Jin at the place where Jin forged his sword. He was named Shim Wanli. Jin couldn't feel Eve's presence meaning this person was an expert in martial arts. Trying to act cool in front of Jin, he also tried to attack Jin with a standard stab. Jin can avoid the attack, but if he dodges, then his ability will be revealed. Not to mention that Shim Wanli is an expert in martial arts. Even if he fights him head-on, Jin isn't sure if he can beat him. He also chose the most likely possibility, namely avoiding the vital part of the sword and the stabbed genie also screamed in pain. Shim Wanli thought that Jin could dodge the attack because it was the most basic move, but it turned out that the rumor that the successor of the Central Heavenly Alliance could not use martial arts was true. However, in a moment, Kasim felt a strange aura of intimidation from Jin Muwan. After that, Jin was treated, and Yun Ha Seol became angry to see Jin Muwan was injured. At least try to fight back even if you lose. A subordinate from Haseo came to him, so they had to leave immediately. Someone called a Chaos Demon. It seems that this Chaos Demon will lead to the Central Heavenly Alliance, and an unexpected battle is about to occur. Weasel is one of the bodyguards assigned to watch over Jin. Incidentally, one of the bodyguards from Dead Heaven is his love rival. The Weasel used to be someone who stole his wife or girlfriend. He tried to teach a lesson, but the Weasel lost. After that, he became a depressed person. During that depression, there was a voice guiding him, a voice trying to repair his meridians. The moment he slashed the sword, a great power appeared. He was startled, he said, as the voice opened his meridian points. It turned out to be Jin Muwan's voice. He could even open someone else's meridians just by listening to a few chants. With his essence, Jin sensed the aura of a strong person at the gate of the Central Heavenly Alliance. It turns out that he is Shim Wanli. He is a kind and friendly person. He was the third son of the Central Heavenly Alliance, and a squire spoke to Jin Muwan. He said that dead heaven invited him. How funny, isn't it? In my current state, you invited the owner, and the suction is a man of manners. He bowed his head to Jin for having been allowed to stay in the Central Heavenly Alliance for the time being. When the Jajin Muwan came to eat, Jin also brought Hayun Sol, which other people thought was his cousin. Jin, while they were eating, a chaos demon arrived and entered the Central Heavenly Alliance. The demon of chaos has broken through the gate. Seeing that, like a hero, he directly confronted the demon of chaos. That demon of chaos was from Silent Night, one of the world's troublemakers, and also the clan that destroyed the Central Heavenly Alliance long ago. It turns out that the demon came to slaughter Hayunsol. Hayunsol was seriously injured earlier from being chased by them. He Hayunsol took a step and stood in front of Jin Muwan. He felt that Jin couldn't do anything, and he would protect Jin. Chaos has started, and Kaon beats the demon of chaos until all his bones are broken, and it turns out that the devil has the power of regeneration. He turned the tables and beat Chion, and up until now, the youngest brother of dead heaven was lazily coming forward. Demon of chaos and says, You don't know who I am, do you? No. The devil immediately patted the child until his whole body was scattered. He continued to protect Jin, not letting Jin get even a scratch. One of the dead heaven used an illusion technique and enveloped the demon. They took the chance and fled from the central heavenly alliance. Few supervisors left there, 
Seeing no other way, he activated his full power, his hair turned white, and he floated up. Seeing that figure, Jin immediately realized who Ha Yunsol was. He is the heir of the White Knight Witch. White Knight Witch is one of the four demon kings who has absolute power. They often cause terror and destruction to the point where their names cannot be mentioned. Ha Yunsol knew she couldn't win against that demon, but she did it to protect Jin. In that brief battle, Ha Yunsol lost. He thought Jin had run away. Ha Yunsol was ready to die, and the important thing was that his helper, Jin Muwan, was safe. Instantly, the hand of the devil was cut off. It turns out that previously Jin took his sword, and he has come back again. Jin Muwan introduced himself. I am the fifth master of the Central Heavenly Alliance sect. The demon genie said there was something strange about him not being able to regenerate from the wound caused by Jin Muwan. Jin Muwan started dodging the demon's attacks continuously, but he dodged with instinct, not technique. This time the demon launches an attack with a large area, and one activates a skill called Wave of Destruction. He executed a slash with Black Aura and protected Hayunsol. Muwan tried to attack the demon. The demon said he had underestimated the successor of the Central Heavenly Alliance, the Fangless Tiger. Still Tiger. Damn, I was off guard. Jin Muwan's attack split a part of the monster's body. But on the other hand, the Demon of Destruction's attack hit hard, already barely able to move. He was in despair, but at that moment suddenly, a white-haired old woman came. Yes, it is Ha Yunsul's grandmother. He came, the sorcerer of the White Knight, one of the four demon lords came. When it comes, what the Witch of the White Knight fears most is not the Demon of Destruction, but a child who is said to have no martial ability. But it turns out he's been hiding it all along, the heir to the man the whole world fears the most, heir of the Central Heavenly Alliance. They intended to kill Jin Muwan, but Hayunsol begged not to kill him. He knelt and prostrated before his master. After that, he was spared, and the Demon of Chaos was quickly killed by the Witch of the White Knight. After that, they left and left Wan in the ruins of the Central Heavenly Alliance. Muwan swore to himself that he will grow stronger. One of Jin Muwan's supervisors saw all of this, and he was shocked. It was amazing that Jin Muwan had such crazy abilities. He suddenly realized that the voice that had guided him earlier was the voice of a genie. Jin Muwan is the one who opens the meridians of his body. The weasel came to Jin Muwan, knelt, and said, Please let me be his servant, master. I swear to God you are my one and only master, and I will be loyal. He knew after seeing you. He knew that storm would come again. The sect of the Central Heavenly Alliance will rise again. The person the entire world fears the most will appear again and I will become his loyal servant and see what this world will be like. The weasel became the first sword. Weasel made up a story that the Central Heavenly Alliance was attacked by Silent Knight, and Jin Muwan died in that incident. It was a story engineered by a weasel, Jin Muwan said to wait for him to return to the world. He would practice first in a while. Several years later, it was seen that Jin Muwan was living in a mountain alone. His body was covered with wounds. It had been seven years during which time Jin Muwan had continuously made the Central Heavenly Alliance's techniques reach their highest level. Pa Kuang is one of the most loyal people to Jin Muwan who usually provides the troops with food, still accompanying Jin Muwan to this day. Mr. Huang said goodbye to Jin Muwan to trade, but after three months, Mr. Huang still did not come back. Jin Muwan said, I will look for Mr. Huang. It's time to go out into the world. You can see the mountain where Jin Muwan was practicing full of deep slashes. At the last moment of his training, he was also testing the abilities of his new sword. Black sword with one slash. Using that skill made a mountain disappear. He felt ready. His strength had reached its maximum level. It's time for adventure. Jin decided to go out into the world and look for the person he was most loyal to, namely Uncle Huang. The genie went to a white dragon trading company where it was said that Uncle Huang worked as a bodyguard for the trading company. After he went to the company, it turned out that Uncle Huang had indeed been missing for quite a while, and they didn't even know where he was. There was a child who was always coached by Huang, named Munjuk. Jin also decided to go to the area the white dragon was aiming for, their next trading area. 
Jin decided to apply as an escort for their trade train, on the way Jin already felt like there would be a storm ahead of him later. Minunjuk started talking to the genie, and this was his first experience as a bodyguard. Jin told Munjuk if something happened to make sure he was around him, Munjuk was doubtful in his heart. He said, if something were to happen, wouldn't it be better to be in the vanguard guarded by a mercenary cabal called the Iron Brigadier? They were quite famous mercenaries, the Iron Brigades observed the Jin. They said there was something strange with the Jin's key, there, but it seemed like it wasn't there at the same time. The genie and the bodyguard stopped to eat, and there they show up to meet a girl delivering food, the daughter of the cook at the tavern and the owner of the tavern, and it seems he even has a crush on that woman. After some time, a group came from a famous martial arts monastery called Gong Dong Monastery. They made a fuss saying that one of their leader's teeth was broken because there was batu in the rice, so they threw the rice right in the chef's face. Turns out it was just a drama because one of them didn't like the chef. The chef was a former member of Gong Dong Monastery who had retired and opened a business. Then after that, the gang even went further. He beat. The chef's daughter appears asking them to give them one more chance, but they get angry and draw their swords. Seeing that as fast as lightning he was in front of the point and blocked their swords with his finger. Everyone was shocked. Jin resisted a master's attack by barking with just his finger, with a relaxed twist, broke the master's sword. Seeing that the other bodyguards headed to Jin's place, but with casual movements, Jin slaughtered them. One of Gong Dong's successors tries to bully Jin, but Jin immediately breaks his hand without mercy. One of them says, You are in big trouble. Let Gong Dong take revenge and be ready. Then Jin told him to come. I just need to destroy Gong Dong Monastery of Nine Nonsense. After that incident, Jin told the White Dragon trade chief that he would endure all threats from the Gondo Monastery and one of the representatives from the Iron Brigade came to Jin. He asked, Why did that? If you cooperate and let those demon kids lose an arm, then it won't be as big. This is the problem. Jin said that everyone just stays quiet when crimes happen. So why learn martial arts? I will change this filthy world, Jin said. The night had come. The demons and Jin chatted casually that night accompanied by a bonfire. Suddenly Jin felt that Eve was killing. Jin asked Munjuk to enter the tent. The eldest brother, Gongdong Nunnery, came, or rather he had become one of the current Gongdong abbots. He brought some elite people, also a person called Guang. He says, I heard you persecute monastic disciples, who are you? Jin replied, I'm just an ordinary warrior from the north. He will give punishment, Jin. The genie answered casually, If that's the goal, why talk again? Just hurry up and start. All of Gong Dong's disciples attack Jin together. Jin draws the sword from the scabbard. Instantly, all of Gong Dong's disciples were blown away by the intense pressure just by drawing his sword. Jin applied the pressure that could throw them all away. Jin continued to fight with them using only the sheath and knocked them all out and also fainted. Knowing that Jin is a martial arts master, Jin uses his finger-splitting skill to destroy the enemy's swords with just a flick of a finger. Guang's entire army could not move and was slaughtered. Guang immediately went forward. He said he would finish off Jin with his best attack and launched a grand attack called Five Elements Spreading Destruction. But Jin with super speed avoided it, and suddenly he was behind Guang. Everyone who saw the fight shook their heads. How could one person take on the entire army of the first-generation Gongdong Monastery so casually? Not even the seams of his clothes were scratched. The brigade guards also saw this fight as watching a movie. They understood how terrible Jin's strength actually was against Guang, casually and belittled him, even though Guang had already exerted his all. She too feels spared, and she tells him to give her all. Jin just replied, All my abilities? Sorry, I seem impertinent. It's been a long time since I've fought anyone else. So allow me to use my power, said Jin. At the end of the sword, Tedusukma falls star. A huge skill cast by a genie, a huge black wind enveloped Jin's surroundings. Guang sat on the ground. His legs went limp. It could be seen that the skill level used by the genie was too high and too far to overcome. Jin swung his body, and before the black blade reached Guang's throat, suddenly a voice stopped him. Mr. Warrior, please don't kill him. The person who came was the previous owner of the food stall. He told me everything that happened to Guang. Finally, 
Guang understood what happened. The shop owner was crushed in the past, so he couldn't use martial arts at all anymore, and even his underlings, who had been impudent before, kept harassing him incessantly. Now it can be seen that the three troublemakers at the cafe before were already standing with their heads down apologizing to Jin Muwan because he acted even before checking clearly what the real story was. Guang's subordinates started to defend themselves, even saying that he did that solely for the Guang. So when the shop owner used to be one of the candidates to be the clan master of the Mumps Monastery, Guang is also one of them. They decided to destroy one of them so that Guang could become the leader easily. Hearing that, Guang got even more angry. He says, I want to kill you right now, but that's too easy for your life. I will ruin your life, and you will suffer many times more than the shop owner. I will destroy your change, and I will exterminate a rotten like you. I cleared Gongdong Monastery of people like you. Guang was very angry, and he saw Jin. He was saying to himself that he had actually already reached one of the highest ranks at this point but he wasn't even a genie's opponent at this point. Guang apologized to Jin. He also says, Mawun, sorry for my impudence to you. Guang suddenly gasped. Jin Muan from the north? Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 it's not him, right? Their journey continues. When on the way, Jin bought a sword to point. On the way back to the inn, he saw some young people bullying an old man. Jin wanted to act, but suddenly a big man came to destroy the bullies seeing that Jin felt no need to interfere anymore. Arriving at the inn, he finally learned that the big man earlier was the chairman of the Iron Brigade. He then brought Jin to that place, Black Moon, a very mysterious spy organization. They say they know all the information faster than everyone. The enemy entered a house by saying a password, after which he asked about the news of the accomplice named Black Moon. He wanted to know all the information before they all got there. The Black Moon side passed on some information about the demonic fist sect with the dark blue swords showdown. When the jinn and mongoose had said goodbye, the leader of the Black Moon immediately asked to send his best spies with heavenly class to keep an eye on jinn. Celestial grade is the highest and best grade there is. On the way, the jinn and the white dragon traders continued. On the way, they saw two people who belonged to the Tan family the family that was legendarily the best when it came to poisons. They are being attacked by two people from the poison advertisement. They asked for help from the gang of jinn who were passing by. But a few minutes after all that happened, the horde of jinn and white dragon traders was surrounded by enemies. The enemy this time was named Red Ghost. They were quite famous. They are one of the assassin clan. Jin fought their general. He was quite strong too. Of course the general was pushed quickly by the genie. He didn't think Jin was that strong at all. Nam Goen entered the forest and got the timing. He also issued a skill called Fire Dragon Burning Core, a great spear skill. He had thought the skill would instantly kill the genie, but in reality it didn't. Jin was thrown into the air, and his clothes were slightly damaged because the skill had contained the element of fire, causing the clothes of the genie to catch fire. Jin cast a skill out of the air and hit the general. Everyone was stunned to see Jin's skill. One of them was the head of the Iron Brigade who had never seen Jin's strength before, until finally the general was almost defeated. Suddenly some people came to save him with a poison bomb. Chairman Tan, who was heavily injured before, is now getting better in his body. He healed himself by inhaling the poisons he was carrying at this time. He is known as the master of 10,000 poisons, poison country. He can kill as well as recover himself. The Tan family is well known. Jin Muwan said they would repay someone's kindness ten times more, he said. The journey begins again. Looks like the granddaughter of the Tan clan chief likes Jin who looks very strong and cool. Chairman Tang gave a gift in the form of poison to Jin Muwan, which was very valuable. It could restore the body quickly and ward off various types of poison. Jin was planning to separate himself from the white dragon horde, and hearing that, the family didn't invite Jin to come with them. Their goal this time was either the Devil Fist Sect or the Fist Sect. Back when the Central Heavenly Alliance clan was victorious, there were four pillars that eventually betrayed one of them named, and now he founded a clan called the Demon Fist Clan. When the grandson of the head of Tang Sem and the genie, the grandfather immediately issued a funny face code.
Jin said he would have some business to take care of first, and he excused himself. Jin is currently looking for someone named Scholar Three Minds, or he is currently known as a Mad Scholar, someone who is a genius who can make Jin conquer the world in the future. After the genies and demons said goodbye to the White Trading Company because they wanted to walk solo, they visited an inn. The genie told Munjul to wait for him at the inn in a few days, as the genie had something to do. Actually, Jin knew that the trip he was going to take this time was quite dangerous, so he asked Munjul not to go with him first. After his business is done, it is likely that Jin will pick up the show again. Jin tried to find out about the whereabouts of the Three Minds Scholar. Some people around there dubbed him a Mad Scholar, and the genie asked a bunch of delinquents about the whereabouts of this Mad Scholar. But it turns out that the mob that the genie asked about had a grudge against the Mad Scholar. They feel sick of hearing that name, so they intend to beat Jin. Of course they had the wrong person. The genie used his breaker finger skill and hit the thug in the face with just a finger prick, causing three people to faint in an instant. Jin also began to ask again with one of the people who had been spared by him. That person also told a chronology of why they hated the Mad Scholar so much. Before that Mad Scholar tricked them into stealing all their money, but he didn't even do it secretly. He did it by gambling until finally the four of them planned to cut off the Mad Scholar's hand. But immediately, the Mad Scholar pointed up at the sky. But when they looked up at the sky, down some very beautiful, beautiful women. They are like goddesses with passionate lust. They carry out desires in their minds created by the illusions of Mad Scholars, until finally, they are completely unaware of what they are doing in public places. They did indecent things to sacks of gold. Everyone in the place saw the shameful act that the four thugs had committed without realizing it. Apart from losing their money, they also lost their reputation, which made them no longer able to run the gambling parlor. Jin continued to look for the mad scholar's side for days and passed through various areas that the scholar had visited, until at one point the genie entered the forest and unknowingly entered an illusion. Jin was shocked. He didn't even notice that he was hit by an illusion. Jin could conclude that this was not the usual. He realized who had created this illusion. Finally, Jin concentrated his mind and was able to escape from the illusion. The figure of the three mind scholar or mad scholar was finally seen clearly after the illusion was broken. The genie and the mad scholar sat drinking tea together and chatting. The mad scholar asked, how could Jin escape from his illusions? But Jin only said because the scholar's hunch was crazy. Very annoyed that someone could break his illusion so easily, he says that he seeks the side of the mad scholar because of Guang's recommendation from Gongdong Monastery before. The mad scholar doubted that Jin would beat the Guang, because that Guang was also a person who could have abilities that were at the peak of a master. Then Jin asked him back about the missing person from the White Trading Company. The mad scholar told Jin to come over to the Jade City there. Chances are he'll get something. Jin also told the missing scholar to go with the genie, but for now the scholar doesn't know Jin well, so he refuses Jin's offer. One of the former great pillars of the Central Heavenly Alliance who betrayed the past, he said that he had the great ambition of ruling the world. Therefore, he betrayed the chairman of the Central Heavenly Alliance in the past, because Jin Quan Ho, as the chairman of the Central Heavenly Alliance, only dedicated himself to preventing Silent Night's invasion. Yet he has the power to rule the world. His son, the Chief of Fists, had a match with the Chief of the Brigadier. They were talking about a missing person at the White Dragon Trading Company, and they were trying to exchange information. Then shown again the figure of Jin Muan, walking in the middle of a dark forest at night. Suddenly Jin heard the sound of the harp. He immediately knew that this was the sound of the lute from the Sound Master. Jin said being a Sound Master was harder than being a Sword Master, so only a few could. This sound is intended to call the genie. The genie received the call and headed straight for the lute singer. Finally, it is known that he is the mastermind of the people who have been missing all this time. He is the one who controls Jin Muan. He said Jin asked a few things, but it didn't end well. Jin tried to draw his sword from its scabbard. The lute player was also prepared with his musical instrument using the lute. He could even make Jin's cheek hurt and withstand Jin's black padang attack by just swinging his hand. Jin's body was slashed at the speed of sound, nor was it a speed that could be easily dodged, of course. But after giving the wound to the genie, 
and making Jin thrown into the river. He leaves. He says this is not our battle area, too bad. He disappears. Jin was determined to continue. Hunt him. After that, Jin returned to pick up Pointer at the place where Pointer was previously asked by the Jin to wait at an inn, but actually Jin had been away for quite a while, so he doubted that Pointing was fine. He entered Pointing's room. Jin was surprised to find that he is much better than imagined. The Pointing bodies have now become stout. Because Jin left him for a long time, he also felt worried. He was worried that he would be abandoned or abandoned, so he erased those prejudices by working out and practicing every second. Someone who looks like a ninja is a member of the Black Moon with the highest division called the Heavenly Division. He was ordered to spy. He is known as the master of ten disguises. He can easily disguise himself as someone else. Not only can he change his face, he can also change his body from fat to thin or even to emaciated. Point and the genie continue their journey and finally point at being given direct training by the genie. The genie does practice dueling by pointing with a chopstick. Pointing with a large sword, Jin with only chopsticks gave off an intense aura of pressure. After that, Munjuk was given a hard lesson and slammed with Jin's chopsticks. After finishing practice, they took a short nap and continued their journey again. But on the way, Jin met the leader of the 10,000 Poison sect and also his grandson again. They also happened to be heading to the Jade City, so they asked the genie to come with them. But on this trip, they were protected by either the Four Fist sect or the Demon Fist sect. One of the boxing generals named Huang also participated. Jin knew him very well in the past. He used to play with her as a child, Jin asked himself. Doesn't he recognize me anymore? But it turns out that Guang recognized Jin, but he was doubtful because the Jin he knew was not taught martial arts at all by his father. He just kept being told to read all the time. But the person in front of him this time was a martial master. He was forced to join in betraying the Central Heavenly Alliance because he had no other choice. He is very sorry. But if he hesitated for that moment, he would definitely be killed right away. So he really had no other choice. Im So Guang continued to hypocrite his thoughts. He kept saying it was impossible. He is impossible. On their way to Jade City, they saw a heinous massacre until the victim was shapeless. They suspected it was caused by poison. After arriving at the city of Jade Jin, and pointed to find another inn. When they arrived at their inn, they were immediately served delicious food, but after a while it turned out that the food was filled with sleeping pills. Genie and pointed to sleep. They were put to sleep by one of the Heavenly Division's Black Moons, tasked with finding Jin's information earlier. But this ninja lost consciousness instantly because of the aura from Jin's black sword. He was hypnotized by Jin's sword. He froze for a moment, then woke up. He was shocked. Why didn't he realize that the maid was in disguise? He didn't even realize that his food was filled with sleeping pills. Something like this should be overcome by a genie, unless the person doing it is truly an expert. Jin saw the ninja named Jung In frozen holding the sword. Jin also asked who he was. He answered all of Jin's questions. He was completely hypnotized. This surprised Jin because the sword could even hypnotize the person holding it. After that came Young In's dog and bird who tried to wake him up. When he realized he had dismantled his entire identity, he was so angry he intended to kill Jin and then kill himself because he felt it was a disgrace to Black Moon. But unfortunately, he will not be able to beat the genie. The genie said that if Black Moon found out that he had uncovered Khan's secret, then he would be very embarrassed, so Permit also offered something. Will you ally with me? You are free to extract all the information. I just want to know where the missing people from the White Dragon Company is, Jin said. The sword is called Snowflower, so the material for making the sword was found by Uncle Huang. He said the material and material for the sword was a stone that fell from the sky. After that, the stone was revered and worshipped by an inland tribe. Then the tribe was known to have been slaughtered by a group. So there was a strong cursed chi energy wrapped around the sword because it was made of cursed stone. Jin, Munjuk, and Jung In walked the three of them. Suddenly, Jin finds a strange sword. He said it was not a sword that came from this area. Jin knew because he was also a blacksmith so there was a possibility that these foreign swords were the missing White Dragon Trading Company escort swords. It is possible that their swords were being traded in the market, 
and it turned out that the mastermind behind the disappearance of the bodyguards, of which they were one of the Red Ghosts, was selling weapons belonging to the missing bodyguards. So their activities were detected by a splinter boxing cult called the Oracle. The power of boxing was once the leader of the fist split, intending to clean up intruders who caused trouble in his area, because they often disguised themselves. The Oracle decided to slaughter all the people, be it elderly children, civilians, or women. He said they had to clean up before the Central Heavenly came, even if necessary by slaughtering all its citizens. Really crazy. Young In and Munjul arrive at the place where all the people who have been slaughtered what they see at this moment is an abomination more than anything else. There were slaughtered civilians, but not a few of the red ghosts were lying there. The first time I saw this terrible scene, I almost lost my mind. This was truly a terrible thing to witness. Chairman Im, who doesn't know anything, gets a report from his subordinates, and he goes to check on himself. Arrived at the location, he was very angry, and he arrested one of the perpetrators of the massacre. Turns out it was someone he knew. That person said that this was all in order from the Splinter Fist sect's noble, because it was considered the enemy disguised as civilians, the head of the government to massacre all of them indiscriminately. Jin also met several Oracle people who were carrying out the action. Jung In told Jin that they were Oracles who came from Fists once, knowing that Jin immediately assumed that it was the Fists that slaughtered all the civilians. Jin was furious. His anger reached Jin's peak, drew his sword and slashed them all until their bodies were pulverized. Three people with one slash become dust flakes. A legendary killing technique of the Central Heavenly Alliance was spat out by the genie. The Jin's eyes filled with rage. Some people came to him, but he destroyed them without the slightest hesitation. Jimin, who saw this scene, was a little afraid of Jin because he had never seen Jin kill anyone else. Usually, he just knocks the guy out. He thought, actually, what kind of trouble did the genie have with the boxing sect? General In also met with several oracles who were doing heinous things, but it turned out that the oracles were also ordered to kill Chairman Im because this chairman was considered no longer in line with him and he could become a threat in the future and finally arrived somewhere and saw the people who has been used up. But what surprised him was the person who was near them, namely General Im, who was covered in blood and both of his hands were missing. Jin approached General Im. Immediately, Im saw Jin and asked Jin, Could you be Jin? He also replied, True, when I was little, you were the one who taught me the basics of martial arts. Listening to that Im no longer able to hold back his tears. Thank God, thank God, thank God you are still alive. My life is so relieved. When I heard you were killed, my guilt was unstoppable. Every time, every second, I can't imagine how hard it is for an innocent child to live alone. I'm sorry I couldn't help you sooner. I'm a coward. I do not dare. I really am a sinner. Please forgive me. I am so Guang really apologize to you and your late father with all my heart. You must stop this terrible tragedy. Immediately he died because of bleeding very much in both hands that had been severed. Jin's anger that had previously peaked was now added to its peak again. He was furious. On the other hand, Oracle has now found the headquarters of the Red Ghost. They entered the base and the first thing they saw was a missing bodyguard locked up. They are now like beasts. They were given a drug to lose consciousness and go crazy. Their boss is the voice master guy who previously clashed with the genie. Man who uses the harp as a weapon of sound. Suddenly the bodyguards who have gone mad and have been drugged are released from their cages in the middle of a battle between the oracles and the merchants who have gone mad. Jin came too. Jin told them all, don't anyone move. It's possible that Uncle Huang is here. The oracle who saw Jin's arrival said, who do you dare to order us so? Jin came down and slashed them all until their bodies were crushed. I'll kill you all. One word from the genie that sent chills down your spine all of a sudden. Namgoi comes, the red ghost captain who was previously defeated by the jinn. He attacked the jinn, and there was a battle, said Jin. He had gotten stronger from the last time they met. The oracle looked at the genie and said, As I have seen him, he is a man not to be easily overcome. Suddenly the harp player was behind the oracle's head. I won't let you get away. We are Silent Night, and I will wake up the sleeping Silent Night again. Geo let out his sound slashing technique. The people around him were hit by the attack, 
blood gushing from all over their orifices like eyes and noses. But the captain had no effect, meaning Sion could adjust his sound attack, which could be shown to whomever he wanted. Jin said, It's really amazing. He has become a master. They both attacked Jin simultaneously. Jin also chose the weakest opponent first to finish off. Jin cast a skill called Shadow Blade of End Fifey Dance of Blood, a skill in a large skill circle called Gathering of the Thousand, and instantly, Jin pointed his sword at Jian. But when Giong's attention is diverted, the chairman of the oracle who had previously been killed was not yet dead. He held on to the Giong clothes so that his movements were restricted. At that moment a slash aimed straight at him, and a calm demeanor moved to protect the king as a meat shield. It turns out that they are friends from childhood, but have always protected Jiang from childhood until now. Therefore, he is willing to die for the Jiang. Seeing his best friend slashed in the face, he was furious. He was one of the highest techniques using the zither, until the zither broke. Jin was hit by those huge attacks, but most of them were dodged by him. He said, Master Jin, could it be that the skill you used earlier was gathering many thousand shadows? Looking at your face, it looks like my guess was right. You know my master said when you saw the gathering. Often thousand shadow attack. It feels like a strange darkness is slowly enveloping you. It feels like your mind is being torn apart while my face and body are hard to move. That's what I felt and saw just now. You must be Jin Jin Muwan's son of the legend of the North Wall, who was said to have died ten years ago, right? Jin immediately replied, That's right, and you're the one who rivals the might of the four lords of Silent Night. A name many martial masters feared. You're the son of the Thousand Sounds of Death, right? The person who I thought and trained me has the title of Thousand Sound of Death. But now it is my title. He takes out his trump card. His main weapon is the flute. He said, When I heard that you were killed ten years ago, I was as desperate as if it wasn't the Central Heavenly Alliance. Who else will remember us from Silent Night? Jin asked. Are the four lords of Silent Night still alive? He wanted to make sure that his woman, Han Onsol, was still alive. Geo takes out a big skill called Destructive Sound of the Falling and kills Yunsol. The genie survived and jumped on it. Jin asked one last time, Where did you hide the other prisoners? Jin and Silence went back to doing their big technique class. Part of the Jiang's body was seriously injured. When he landed while not stopping chattering, Jin gave no space to evade and slashed at him multiple times while saying, Just standing up now feels really hard. When he wanted to blow his flute again, Jin slashed into dust. Jin cast one of his high-level techniques, executing an Ashura-like slash, then sheathed her sword again. All of the Jiang's skin was peeled off, only the flesh that covered the bones remained, but he still kept swearing. Jin kicked his leg upside down, and finally he died from blood loss. Jin ate the pill the leader of 10,000 poisons gave him before, because he had lost too much Kai. Suddenly he felt someone's presence. The presence was so strong it made Jin's body freeze. A man with a spear came, long cloak like a bat spear with a pale ghostly carving of eyelight. He is one of the four demon lords, one of the lords of Silent Night of Black Wings. It was impossible to fight against him now. He is one of the legendary Ko. What should I do? said Jin. He takes Jiang's body and asks Genie, So you're still alive? Jin Muwan. Do you know me? How could it not be Silent Night Immortal Enemy was the son of the wall of the Central Heavenly Alliance? He stabbed Jin, but it happened to be an object given by the grandson. The poison chief resisted the attack from the spirit, otherwise Jin's body would have been filled with holes. Jung In who saw their fight finally knows who Jin really is. The reappearance of the Central Heavenly Alliance and Silent Night. Oh God, is this a disaster? With one hand holding a spear, the old man can make a genie crash. But at the last moment, at a very crucial moment, Jin unleashed one of his best skills. If you can't be sure, he will die. A skill clash occurred. Jin was almost knocked unconscious by the attack, but it seemed the Demon King had no intention of killing now, he said. You must see the awakening of Silent Night, and he left the Jin behind. On the way back, the spear demon held his hollow stomach. A lot of blood came out of his body and he said, Not bad, your northern sword. Jin had recovered from his last battle against a sound master and also against one of Silent Night's demon lords. 
After the three of them returned to the inn, they suddenly met the Iron Brigadier. It doesn't seem like a coincidence, but the Iron Brigadier himself made it look like a coincidence, even though everyone knew that he really wanted to ask for help. The genie moved to the head of the Fist Sect who was talking to one of the envoys from the Central Heavenly Alliance. There were more than 300 people who died in Jade City, and Secret Fist was once thought to be the mastermind behind the disaster. Violence like this could hinder the business of the Central Heavenly Bodies and could undermine everyone's trust, but everyone knew that the one who cleared things up and revealed Silent Night was a single swordsman from the North. The name of the Northern Sword has become famous. Jin, who held that nickname, suddenly became famous. Yet no one knew that he was the sole inheritor of the legendary Central Heavenly Alliance. Initially, after carrying out a live massacre, the Fists had wanted to accuse those who were rioting in Jade City as the mastermind, which was finally discovered yesterday that they were Silent Night. But because of Jin's presence, the whole plan of the Splinter Fist was ruined and their name was tarnished. He also had to account for this to Central Heavenly. Instead, at Central Heavenly asking his son John Ho to come to Central Heavenly. Actually, it was done to keep his son hostage, and in case John Ho didn't give them any bigger problems. The root of this problem is that North Sword, he promised to meet North Sword in person and teach him a lesson he deserves. He himself did not know who the motorbike was. The next day, Jin tried to find another place. From the clues gathered where Uncle Huang was, the rest of the people who were driven mad by Silent Night. Those of the Iron and White Trading Company continued to follow the Jin, actually because their deal with boxing had fallen through. Therefore, they didn't know where else to look for information to find the missing persons from the White Dragon Trading Company, so the only information was Jin. He was directly involved with Silent Night, and surely he had a clue. The head of the Iron Brigade saw a beautiful, cute woman continue to follow Jin. He also said, why is a woman as beautiful as herself following someone as dangerous as a genie? The woman suddenly lowered her pants and showed her gun to the chairman. Shocked. What a freak because there is something very big down there, and in fact he said it was bigger than his own. Yes, the woman is jung in who is changing her body and appearance too. The first sword raised by the genie or the first sword of the genie. So this weasel is currently the head of elite secret intelligence from the center of the Central Heavenly Alliance. The position was earned with his own blood and sweat. Seven years passed when he first saw the power of the jinn in the Central Heavenly Alliance, and he was the only living witness to that tragedy. He was interrogated day and night for several months. Not an ordinary interrogation, but a months-long torture. But he kept on answering the same questions. Namely, he didn't see jinn coming out of the burning house, and he was sure that according to the Central Heavenly Alliance, he was already dead. He was believed after being tortured for months. But he wasn't just let go. He started to become the lowest-ranking soldier in the branch. She worked as a maid and was watched for three years, until finally she was cleared of all suspicions. Instead, his hard training and his tenacity as well as his abilities made him the right-hand man of the official named Manchuk. One day, while he was serving, Manchuk came to Central Heavenly to request special intelligence assistance. Seeing the opportunity, Weasel volunteered himself as special intelligence, initially rejected by Mansuk, but finally he was able to leave after becoming low intelligence. At that time, thanks to his ability and hard work as well as the sweat he shed every day, he became a leader in Central Heavenly. Secret Intelligence itself was the source organization for all the information Central Heavenly, so inside, he kept spreading the news that the heir of the Central Heavenly Alliance had died. He's dead. He can't live. He was waiting for the moment to return to Jin, but he had to make Jin Muan's plan go smoothly. He has to get all the information that will be useful for Jin later. He only has one master, namely Jin Muan. Finally came to the Sad Mountains, the Cave of Despair. Before they all entered the Cave of Despair, the Chief Iron Brigadier told the White Trading Company that they didn't need to enter as the Aura there was surprisingly much more intense than expected, so they were told to turn around and wait at the inn for their own good. After that, the rest of them, including the Jin group, confirmed that the cave was getting deeper, into his aura was getting more and more sinister. They stopped at a dead-end road, said one member of the clean brigadier that this seemed to be shrouded in a strong illusion so handed it over. 
You are good at illusion after that. He asked for some people to arrange a series of stones nearby to break the illusion. He started screaming. It took a long time. The genie says maybe an illusion like this for the mad scholar is nothing. Very easy, it seems. I will need his help in the future because Jin himself doesn't understand the art of illusion. Finally, the illusion was broken and a large cave appeared in front of them. They were still in the cave and found so many guards that Silent Night almost drove them crazy. Jin finally met Huang's uncle. Huang was the only person who was still conscious out of them all, because before that he had applied a lot of blood pressure to his body so that the poison would not spread any further. Jin also gave him the poison that was previously given to him by the Tang family. He said it was a medicine of 10,000 poisons or more. After eating it, he was getting better. Then the Iron Brigade also found the third brother from Booty's trading company. Their mission was finally almost complete. On the way back, they were confronted by the administration from Central Heavenly. They said good job. Jin Muan, huh? Now you can leave the rest to us. Central Heavenly. We will take care of them together with the Heavenly Pulsa. There is also the 10,000 Poison Master of the Tang family. Central Heavenly had lost his chance because Jin took their part, meaning that Jin took care of Silent Knight's attack alone, and he also saved the guards. So Central Heavenly plan fell apart because at first they wanted to ingratiate themselves with the people by cleaning up the whole mess, but at least treating the remaining bodyguards to attract the attention of the public. They were very angry, actually, with the genie who ruined the plan. One of Silent Knight's demon lords who carries the corpses that have been killed by jinns. The corpse was handed over to Silent Knight's elders as well as teachers and family, and Yak was named Yan John, or his former nickname was Thousand Sound of Dead. The elder asked, Who killed from the Central Heavenly Alliance? He laughed and said he must be the Central Heavenly Alliance. Summon Silent Knight's four demon lords, and I request that a meeting be held as soon as possible, said the elder. One of the elders with the title of owner of the White Knight, or also called Miss White Knight Witch. He's on a killing spree. He said he had an annulment with a group of assassins intent on attacking him. After that, he also met the true master. Silent Knight, and also his teacher, or one of the demon kings and the true owner of the nickname of the White Magician, said the master. It seems that soon the nickname of the owner of the White Knight will suit you. Han Unsol. Before further coaching, he was given some free time for himself. Enjoy your time, because after this there will be no more time for personal. Ha Unsol said, What should I do? Ever since I practiced Silver Light of Ice Crystal, I can't remember anything about my childhood even a few years back. Then he said, Okay, I'll head over to the mainland and take one last look. There because I'm about to destroy it. One of his arrogant successors named Master Sim recovers from that trauma, and a woman named Hieri, also possessing intelligence that is close to that of a mad scholar. In fact, they have comparable abilities, but he used hereditary tactics to defeat the strategy battle with the mad scholar first, so that the mad scholar got his first defeat, as well as the strong mental pressure that made him almost go crazy. Therefore, he is known as the mad scholar. Kiryu tells Sim that they have to recruit the Mad Scholar because it will be disastrous if someone else gets his help. Then they also talked about the Sword of the North destroying Silent Knight's attack single-handedly. At once they said the man's name was Jin, and he was from the North. Is it possible that they also intend to find out the truth for themselves? Because the news circulated that Jin Muwan was dead. Jin took a walk with Uncle Huang while talking. Suddenly he met a man who looked crazy in the middle of the lake. That person is the mad scholar. They talk over sake. You're in the middle of this lake not just for rowing, right? You created illusions and collected all the fish under your boat. What a wonderful prank. The mad scholar had already heard all about the northern sword and its nickname, but he suddenly said, Yu Jin Jin Muan is not the fifth generation triangular sect master of the Central Heavenly Alliance. The genie's eyes widen and he downs a few glasses of sake, a sign he wasn't prepared that this mad scholar found out so soon. The mad scholar said, Do you want revenge, or do you want to rule the sky? Jin replied, I don't know, but I will not betray my conscience. If my conscience says revenge, then I will do it. If he says I must rule the sky, then I will do it too. Listening to it, the scholar, who clearly laughed, I'm starting to like you. He often paid attention to the sky 
The mad scholar found that there was a big change from the sky according to his observations when Jin appeared. As if a great hero will appear, or a destroyer who can destroy the sky will appear. Mad Scholar tied up his hair and he said, I am Scholar, he thought Jin would become warrior Jin Muwan, the fifth generation sect master of the Central Heavenly Alliance. How about undergraduate? I need to prepare a few things before leaving, and I will catch up on the day of your departure. After that, Jin returned to the inn and gathered with the others. Several days passed. Finally, the day of departure home. They arrived just then the scholar came. He knows when Jin will leave. It turns out that the scholar is very compatible with the head of 10,000 poisons. They have a very serious and relaxed conversation. Chatter between geniuses. Uncle Huang said that later he would catch up. You first. Jin and Uncle Huang intend to go to the village that was slaughtered in the past and the origin of the cursed stone that Uncle Huang once cited to make Jin's black sword. Once there, Jin's sword shook violently. On the other hand, the chief iron brigadier said to himself, I had a bad feeling on this trip, and the strongest person was leaving. Hopefully nothing happens on the way. Sometime after they left, suddenly they were confronted by a group of people, and what was even more surprising among those who led was Ju. The head of the boxing sect had, he came to seek revenge and look for Jin, because his Jin sect was closed. Jin and Uncle Huang arrive at the ruins where Uncle Huang finds stones to make Jin's black sword. He then told me that the information that was spread was that the Fist sect had slaughtered the residents and tribes here for some reason, and the stones that Uncle Huang took were said to be stones that fell from the sky and were worshipped by the residents there. Uncle Huang also brought Jin to where he found the stone. Jin's sword vibrated even stronger. The genie said his cries were getting louder, and his sword indicated that the genie had to remove the rocks in front of him to make way into the cave. Jin went inside, and what he saw surprised him. Jin saw a woman's corpse with blood, in the hands and throats that had been slit, and then they had become mummified. Their bodies weren't crushed from being cooped up in a closed room for a long time. Seeing the scene, Jin said, This is a forbidden ritual called Demonic Art of Blood of the Woman where with this technique one can increase internal kai many times using a woman's blood as a sacrifice. On the other hand, Josenwo's iron fist blocks the white dragon traders who intend to return. Joe immediately asked the chief of the iron brigadier, Are you the sword of the north? The chairman answered and introduced himself. He says previously northern sword was indeed with them, but he is going somewhere. And later he said, we are carrying out the mission of delivering the White Trading Company and the Tang family. Can we continue our journey? I'm going to vent these emotions, so you prepare to die. He then ordered all his members to slaughter them all. Seeing no room for compromise, he prepared for battle. The chairman said, Are you really far from one of the former four pillars of the Central Heavenly Alliance? John Ho replied, Wow, how dare you call me that? seems to have forgotten what it was like to be the four pillars of the Central Heavenly Alliance. The chairman immediately jumped and tried to take the first step to cut down John Wu. Jin tells the story of a village and a village in a mountain called the Cursed Mountains. Villagers here. They don't interact with outsiders and they worship nature. Once upon a time of honor, they found a star stone and started worshiping it as a sacred stone. Suddenly, the tribe was slaughtered by a group that seemed to punch. They killed the men and took the women only. After that, the kidnapped women were hung from the ceiling of the cave and their throats. Also, the veins of their hands were sliced so that their blood flowed like warm water filling a small lake. In the cave filled with the blood of those who poured it, a higher-up of their group relaxes while taking a bath like a bath in a hot spring. He was so angry, he said he would curse them and avenge them even though he was dead. The curse was embedded in a sacred stone that was brought by Uncle Huang to Jin Muwan. Jin seems to be able to see all those flashbacks in that sad event. He told his sword, Stop crying, snowflakes. Snowflower is the name of the sword. I will avenge you. So this kind of grudge multiplied. Firstly, the grudge for John Ho's betrayal of the Central Heavenly Alliance, and also the grudge from his sword spirit. The troops from the Iron Brigade began to approach. They saw the situation at a disadvantage. The mad scholar began to analyze the possibilities. He looked up at the ceiling, saying, Wow, what a fine day to bring lightning or whatever out of the sky. 
Then the mad scholar ordered the demon to stick some papers in a certain place which he ordered to mark before. After that he also sent telepathy to the strategist from the Iron Brigadier. He said, Attack when I give the signal, he said. The three mind scholar started casting his illusions. A dust storm came from behind them so the enemy thought an additional troop was coming. Suddenly from the sky a rain of arrows that very much hit them. The fist members panicked and tried to block the arrows with their hands. Instantly, the mad scholar gave the signal to launch an attack due to being sidetracked by the illusion of dirt and dust. The fist was caught off guard and was hit by an unexpected surprise attack. The chief didn't say, Wow, this dust storm and arrows are your illusion. It turns out that not only the enemy can see the illusion, but everyone. After that from the scholar the three minds or the mad scholar pasted the sheet again on the two largest parallel trees. But he was hindered by one of the elite boxing ever. At first he was beaten up, and also his sword attacks were useless. In the body-hardening technique, they suddenly appeared. Remembering the teachings of the genie first when they practiced, the shadow appeared to apply it. Yunsol, he can cut off his other hand and stab his body to death. Pointers, I ended up killing people, and again those people he killed actually had peak abilities, because they were elites directly below the channel. Yunsol carries out orders from the mad scholar. Now it's time for the mad scholar to play with his illusions again. This time an illusion was created that made no sense at all, so that people seeing it instantly knew it was an illusion. A huge footprint that would fall on them. Because of the previous incident, in the end, even this illusion was not avoided by them, because they knew that this was just an illusion. There's no need to avoid too much, and there's no need to worry too much about it. But it turned out to be two large trees that they cut down, created a hand illusion, so they thought there was no need to avoid because this was a Yunsul's illusion. They were crushed by the big tree, few more troops remaining. The Iron Brigadier will likely take care of the rest. On the other hand, Jin, who was filled with rage and strong aura, finally realized sitting up looking at that aura. He secretly follows Jin because his real job is to take all the information from the genie. Jin told Uncle Huang he was one of the assistants. Suddenly came a bird, told Chong and that a splinter fist sect attacked a white trading company, and heard that without further ado, Jin immediately rushed there as fast as possible. Moving on to the chief's fight, Iron Brigadier and Chief John Ho Iron Brigadier issued a technique called Blade of Demonic Dragon. But the attack was only parried using wind blows. That's the difference in their abilities. A powerful strike hit the chief. He vomited blood. Those two damn devil fists. How can you not weaken with old age? Gio Sendo says just this, I overestimated you. When Joe wants to attack, his cloak catches with the sword or padang scabbard. Because the view was diverted, the second side issued one of his ultimate techniques, but the attack can be held without even a scratch by the Gijo. Finally, the chief was hit by John Ho's crushing and powerful attack. He went to the Iron Rank Troop as well as the Mad Scholar. The Mad Scholar said, All right, let's give it a third shake. He turned his gaze and his hand towards the sky, a huge illusion came out at the first fist. Is this real, or just an illusion? But immediately their eyes became dark black. They become blind and cannot see anything. The strategist Iron Brigador, who also knew illusions, said, Amazingly, it was a tier 4 illusion technique and he could use it so easily and so amazingly. I could actually use it too, but it takes four days to prepare. He's crazy. This illusion technique requires perfect understanding of geography and time, but he exuded it as if it was nothing by focusing all his chi into the eye. But with the help of the Tang family spreading poison with repelling effect, they were completely overwhelmed. The granddaughter of the Tang family who spread the poison. He almost got hit by those who guessed the direction while cornered. Jin came slashing them to dust, and he immediately shot towards Ju Qian Wu, who wanted to finish off the chairman of the third Iron Brigadier. Jin arrived in front of Ju Qian Wu, immediately recognized him. Jin Muwan, he said he, then laughed very hard while saying, Of course it's clear who else. No wonder that name makes me emotional. I thought you were dead. Long time no see Sir Manju, sorry to disappoint you because I'm still alive. I thought that after you betrayed the Central Heavenly Alliance, you would become a different leader. But look what you did. You slaughtered innocent people. What have you become like now? He kept wondering in his heart, where exactly did this Jin learn martial arts? 
because he was sure that the sect leader never taught Jin martial arts. He just told Jin to study constantly. Meanwhile, boxing martial arts have been studied by him. Seijin Muon, while all swordsmanship has been learned by that cunning bastard John Hua, he is nothing more than a seed. I have to stop it now. Joe took out a huge skill, causing huge damage that was very terrible. But the genie was able to dodge the attack with just a few cuts. After narrowing the distance with Uncle Joe, Jin cast the skill shadow blade of End Reign of Lady. The attack destroys Joe's golden gauntlet. Back in the Central Heavenly Alliance had also challenged the sect leader hand-to-hand -hand many times, but he had never been able to defeat him. Whereas the sect leader was not a boxing martial arts expert, but a swordsman, he really is a monster. From that defeat he continued to want to be stronger than anyone, until finally he was able to create his own martial arts that he created to defeat the Nine Heavens from the Central Heavenly. Did not think that he had to issue Seijin Muwan. Now to fight the Jin, a technique called Shinning Face of the Heaven which made both of his hands glow brightly like the fire of the sun. Jin says what a huge key he reached a different level than before. The number of launching an attack in that attack. Making Jin overwhelmed and slammed here and there. He also said, I didn't think you could survive after receiving my punch, and also took out one of his powerful techniques. Jin was thrown against the hill until the hill was destroyed. If that wasn't enough, he continued the attack with a follow-up ultimate attack named Rain O Heavenly Destruction, a chain the size of rain, destroying the planes and also Jin. He was sweating, indicating he had put all his strength into this skill. But when Jin's head was embedded in the ground, the sword... Jin was stabbed in the stomach with the black sword that was stuck, making Jukaku's body and unable to move his legs were hampered. Jin wakes up with blood pouring from his head. Jin, who saw the opportunity, immediately punched the sword that stuck into it until it entered Uncle's body. He was really in pain and without further ado, climbed to his head and held his hair, gave him an elbow right in the face. Several times his body was completely restrained by Jin's cursed sword aura. But finally he was able to free himself from aura's shackles. Jin pulled back his sword. Jin lunged again. This time he stabbed Kakijuk. When Ju's movement stops again, Jin beat him several times. The genie completely overwhelms Ju. Puncture punch slash stab several times. After that they both backed off. Joe said, I'm going to lose to these kids. Don't joke I'm Ju. Ju exerted his all in both hands. Jin also stared sharply, then put up the stance. He will issue his ultimate attack. Jin says, hold on to my words, this time I will really cut you to the punch. An attack called One Focus. Then the effect of the attack was like splitting the entire land slopes into two. It's a very extraordinary slash. Honestly sitting up front. Jin with slash marks like splitting his body. Where did you learn this swordsmanship? The genie answered the profound Central Heavenly Alliance. Swordsmanship like this existed in the sect of the Central Heavenly Alliance. It looks like Yen Zhan Hua only took the skin, not the fruit. Jin continued, Why don't you use the demon blood key of the woman you slaughtered? What are you talking about? Even though I want to be strong, but I will never follow the devil's path. All my stories originate from the Central Heavenly Alliance, and even up to the event I cannot surpass it. Jin said, Last words and also answered, you want me to apologize something like this? Jin instantly slashed and killed without waiting. His words ran out seeing the fight up close, very surprised because Jin can kill a legendary figure. How strong is he really? Meanwhile at the White Trading Company, they are cleaning up the corpses of broken boxing members and waiting for the genie. Suddenly a genie came. He came dragging Joe's body. Facing them, Jin Muwan broke out in a cold sweat. Maybe they didn't expect that Jin could beat the legend. The entire Iron Brigadier knelt in front of Jin. They really respect him. After that, Jin's injuries were treated, and they rested for a while after going through this tough incident. Unprepared, they all sat around the firewood waiting for Jin to say something. Now Jin was busy sewing the precious clothes that Uncle Huang had previously given him. It was quite precious to him. It was also torn from the previous battle. The three mind scholars said, there might be spies around here who saw this incident. Like the Central Heavenly and suddenly also Jung In came and also said, I've checked the Muon genie from earlier, so we can be pretty sure no spies have seen us around here. 
Only we of Black Moon know the gist of this important incident. Jin Muan was shocked. Why is the name Black Moon? The Black Moon itself is here. They are the real ones to worry about because they are the biggest information brokers. But the mad scholar immediately realized what Jin said before, where Jin said there was a shadow partner, so what the genie meant was Chung from the Black Moon. Interesting, said the mad scholar, and again Jin said that he was not a problem because he could be trusted. The mad scholar started to analyze everyone, starting from the Iron Brigadier who must have a huge debt and Booty's debt to Jin. Likewise with white trading companies that can become financial assets in the future. Considering that they owe Jin a great debt of gratitude, also if Uncle Huang and his apprentice were to show up that goes without saying, they would definitely support Jin no matter what. Lastly, the famous big family, namely the Tang family of 10,000 poisons, also owes a lot of respect and respect to Jin. So get a conclusion that must be done now. He started whispering his idea to the genie, and the genie nodded in agreement. Mad Scholar then started talking to Jin Muan. Before we continue the conversation, let's all get acquainted first, even though I've seen him for a long time. Then I will introduce again. This young man in front of you is the sect master of the Fifth Central Heavenly Alliance, Jin Muan. Air and time seemed to stop and suddenly sweat came out of each of them. He was silent for a while, digesting the shocking words. Meanwhile, Jung in panics and says to himself, What is he doing? Why tell this important secret to everyone? But the genie took it easy, as he was completely sure of what the mad scholar was up to. He is the smartest person according to him, and his actions must be a few steps away from everyone else. Someone shouted what sect heir of the Central Heavenly Alliance. I thought he was dead. You're not kidding, right? Then Uncle Tang immediately felt bad for the jinn and said our family was very sorry for not being able to help the sect of the Central Heavenly Alliance ten years ago. Can't be trusted. At this rate, you should meet the great master of the Tan family. White Dragon Company attack with a shocked face just said, Now Jin Muan, be clear and reasonable. His meaning was that the previous nameless youth could defeat a legend that made no sense. But it's a different story that you, the heir of the Central Heavenly Alliance, did it. Looking at Jin with sparkling eyes, maybe in his heart says, I'm the best. The Iron Brigadier Chief laughed loudly. Ha ha ha, what did you say? The head of the Central Heavenly Alliance? Oh. Darling, I know you're not an ordinary person, but who would have thought that you are so extraordinary to be so cool? Cut off the conversation. All right, please calm down first. I'm sure you all must have gotten the help right. Now is the time for you to reply. Jin was still busy sewing his clothes, as if he didn't care. It wasn't difficult at this time. The Central Heavenly Alliance was already interested, but they did not know that the Northern Sword was the current sect master of the Central Heavenly Alliance. It is not the time for us to dismantle his identity to the world. He still needs more strength and support. His identity will surely be revealed. But till then, we keep it a secret as long as possible. You guys just need to keep your mouths shut and keep this and the next Black Moon topic a secret. Now Black Moon is famous for its information broker, and a rumor is known to be the cause of the confusion I just thought of. An extraordinary rumor. So here's the story. Silent Knight tries to occupy a place controlled by Jew to dismantle Silent Knight. Then, the boxing sect had eradicated all life in Jade City, but because of that, they had to close the gates of their sect, and that made Jew no so angry that he searched for and hunted down the remaining Silent Knight members. But finally, Jew died, so we made everyone think that this is an incident between Jew and Silent Knight. But if Central Heavenly intends to investigate deeply, this will definitely be found out right away. But before that gets exposed, we have to spread this rumor as widely as possible, and the only one who might do that is a black moon. With a heavy heart, Chung In ordered his two pets to send the important message to their headquarters. After that, they all have to continue their journey. Uncle Huang himself had to return to the White Dragon Company because he was already bound by a contract there, while Munjuk also joined Uncle Huang to practice. They both said they would practice hard and hard. Someday we'll join the genie again. The head of the Iron Brigade said to the genies, Do you want to go to Central Heavenly? Yes, said the genie. But he will visit the Tan family first. Have you heard the rumors from Central Heavenly? I guess not, so I heard that Central Heavenly is currently forming a powerful organization and recruiting strong people from various places. There will be many factions and warriors heading to Central Heavenly at this time. 
Do you intend to join? Jin also answered that the confrontation between the cave and Central Heavenly was unavoidable, so it seemed better to greet them first. Said the head of the Iron Brigade, Okay, then I'm asking that since it looks like we'll be together now. So hope we meet again there. I will not forget all these actions of yours and they continue their respective journeys. Bodyguards and envoys from Central Heavenly were slaughtered in the middle of the forest. They were slaughtered by a person who used forbidden knowledge called Blade, often women. Demonic knowledge obtained from a tribal slaughter, and it turned out that the person who used the forbidden knowledge was his child. He had completely obtained the devil's power. The journey of the genie and the others was continued. They passed through shady and shady forests. Jin and the Tan family's grandson walked in front, while Uncle Tan sat in the carriage with the mad scholar as he continued to tell stories. Jin himself kept thinking about Ju's last words, where he said he did not use forbidden knowledge at the expense of women, immediately thought lest his friendly son used it or did it. Suddenly Chung In came in front of them. He is now a guide for them. His face looks very annoyed because as one of the best black moon, he instead becomes a guide. They rest at night and light a bonfire. While looking at the quite beautiful night, the crazy scholar approached Jin. He said if you want to live by following your heart, then he just needs eyes that can read the world. So stay focused because Mad Scholar will help him as the eye. Finally, they continued their journey and arrived at the nearest town. Apparently intending to look for lodging, Jin collided with a shoulder. Wow, where are your eyes? Want to die, huh? Apologize quickly. Jin also apologized directly to him. Then the person left. Last year, Chung In said, Why him? Why challenge you? He doesn't love life, does he? Suddenly, Uncle Tang lost something from his pocket. The young man with lightning speed took a few things from his pocket, and that person immediately opened one of them. Uncle Tang shouted, Don't open it, but it's too late. It contains a very strong poison. He panicked instantly and ran towards the young man to save his life. But what a surprise it turned out that this very strong poison had no effect on that person in the slightest. Jin was suddenly in front of that person and said, Give back what you stole. He refused and attempted to attack the jinn. But the genie easily hit him in the stomach with the hilt of the sword. He kept trying to attack Jin with all his might, but his moves were amateurish moves for survival. Jin acknowledged the resilience of this person's body. Thinks Jin is a noble who carries a sword, but with a little martial arts likes to abuse people. A flashback also shows when this person used to live quite poor. His mother was dying, but his mother kept saying that he had talent with the money left by his mother. This person also went to a sect, but how annoying that sect. Look at the poor, dirty money thrown by them. He got angry and bit the sect guard. In essence, he hated being belittled by nobles who had money. He who knows martial arts a little then oppresses others. Several times this person was also hit by Jin Dan's sheathed sword. Suddenly Uncle Tang came and asked the genie to stop him. Uncle Tang said that it's rare to find someone with this person's talent. Uncle Tan himself has a poison immune body, but he does not have a strong body for martial arts. While his grandson is not immune to poison but suitable for martial arts. Yet this guy has both. Body strong and body immune to poison. Stretched out his hand, he said, Have you ever heard of Juan's family? I am the master of the Tan family that owns 10,000 poisons. It's such a shame. It seems you're living a homeless life because no one notices your talent. I went everywhere to find someone like you. Even you are amazing. Why not just become my disciple and become a poison master? Listening to this man's eyes were filled with tears. He immediately prostrated himself and said, Respectful disciple to master. This person is Ryu. He changed to a traveler who saw a beautiful woman in a very lonely place. He was amazed by her beauty. He's the successor of one of Silent Night's demon lords, Eunhol. He offered hot soup to Han Eunsol because apart from being beautiful, this adventurous man was also a bit worried about women stopping at this dangerous place. So he offered to come with his train. Actually has lost his memory since he learned the science from his teacher, but even so there is a glimpse of the image that he remembers very often. Could not be erased from his memories, namely when he was in the Central Heavenly Alliance and all the goodness of the jinn. But unfortunately it's like a blurry flashback that is not clear. Currently, Ha Yunsul doesn't remember Jin Muwan for sure, 
but who knows if they meet again later, he will remember. In the morning, you can see that his eyes are already swollen. It turns out that he cried all night thanks to the story about his sad past. Tang says he's just a poor guy with talent but nowhere to lean. Now he has officially become the disciple of the Poison Master. Moving on to Sio, a weasel summoned by one of the strategists of the Lower Seven Heavens of the Central Heavenly Alliance, he got straight to the point. He said, what if the Sword of the North is Jin? The weasel remained relaxed in answering him, if he was sure of the genie's death at that time. But if there is luck and he survives, then there is no doubt that the Sword of the North is Jin Muan. Have said goodbye, Sio Weasel immediately said in his heart. Looks like I have to move soon. In one assembly, one of the important and exalted people in Central Heavenly, where his first loss was when he visited the Central Heavenly Alliance back then, and the chaos monsters that came defeated him. But the news of his defeat was tightly hidden, as if the world only knew that he was a man who had never lost, had gone through countless and countless battles. After that first defeat, he continued to practice for seven years and learn the science that should be above all sciences. Other Martial Arts Now he will start moving Ryu and Uncle Tang start practicing. Ryu was told to eat poison all night until he was full, and so surprisingly, Ryu is more resistant to poison than Uncle Tang himself, not to mention a strong physique for martial arts. Uncle Tang taught him the art of poison. He was always praised even though his progress was small. He became arrogant and embarrassed as if he was a genius born once in 1,000 years. But when it was said that Jin was in charge of martial arts lessons, he was immediately frightened. He was coached by the Jin until his face was badly battered, Finally, Jin's group arrived at the Tang family's big residence, said the scholar to the genie. When you enter the Tang family residence, then you can see the traditions that have been kept for hundreds of years. Young In asked Jin to say goodbye. He said that he had been in the field too long, so he had to report some reports to main headquarters first. Chung In said they don't have to wait for him because wherever they are, he will definitely find them and will catch up later. When they went inside to the Tank family residence, there was an old man standing at the top of a tree watching them while laughing. Entering the family courtyard, they were greeted as the head of the small family, meaning that there was indeed a head of the big family waiting for them inside. Then once there, Jin asked for time to take a walk for a while. The direction of his journey was towards the forest. The atmosphere of the jungle is a family that is a family who likes to be in the mountains, different from other big and popular families. But suddenly Jin felt a strange feeling. There was no doubt that this was a very thick killing intent. Started to turn to see where it was coming from. Very big key, said Jin. The wind blew hard around Jin, as if Jin was surrounded by gusts of leaves moving in a spiral. Unknowingly, Jin had been trapped by a high-level concealment technique. This must be the work of a martial master who was at the absolute grade. Jin focused himself to the highest level, closed his eyes, drew his sword, and he muttered that the distance was about forty. Jin immediately made a super-fast movement while pulling a part of his sword from the sword-slash-scabbard. Jin stopped right at the throat of an old geezer. Oh, the old man laughed too. He says it looks like this old man's stratagem is going too far. You really remind me of someone in my youth. Jin asked, Who are you? I am the current holder of the highest position in the Tang family, he said. Jin replied, Is the emperor poisoned? Exactly, I am the sect leader of the Jio Wu Tang family, or the emperor of ten thousand. Then are you Jin? Jin Muan, the sect leader of the Central Heavenly Alliance. Yep, that's right, replied Jin. He sheathed his sword again and picked up the poison emperor's scepter that had fallen on the ground. They also walked with the poison emperor, saying, you are the first person to escape the 100 dash of falling leaves so easily. It seems the powers of the sect of the Central Heavenly Alliance are still alive. The Emperor began to say, I have a lot of regrets and blame towards the sect of the Central Heavenly Alliance. Back then I couldn't help the Central Heavenly Alliance. I have a family that I must protect. If we interfere, then our sect will suffer the same fate and be destroyed. When I heard of your father's death, my guilt grew even bigger and not even time could lessen it one bit. Let me ask you, are you ready to live a dangerous life ahead of you? Jin replied, Whatever it is, I will live it to the end without intending to avoid it at all. 
Geez, you really embarrassed this old man. All right, from now on, the Tang family will fully support you. Chief Genie and we swear to protect you from any harm in the future. Please let this old man make amends for his past mistakes, the Poison Emperor said to Jin, then was shown the figure of another one of the pillars of the Central Heavenly Alliance. Where the news about the death of one of them reached his ears, he said that the one who didn't talk about this was Ju, impossible about the news of his death against Silent Night. This figure was the figure of a person who studied swordsmanship, handed down by the sect master of the Central Heavenly Alliance. Jin, who recovered his whole body condition which was full of fatigue due to the accumulated level of fatigue, Jin was asked to enter a water treatment for the Tan family, and with Uncle Tang, who was in the middle of them, began to distribute Kim healing to Jin's body. Jin immediately felt all his fatigue disappear and his energy overflows. The opponent was surprised because Jin's ki was much bigger than he expected. He said it was like filling a large lake was very tiring. Finally, after resting for a few days at the Tang family residence, Jin decided to continue his journey. He was given the Tang family's treasured robe. When Jin wanted to leave, Uncle Tang and his grandson were already ready to go as well. Why are you here? said Jin. Uncle Tang replied, I'll come with you. You're too young and too careless to take care of yourself, so I'll take care of you on this trip. While his grandson, who has a crush on Jin, just says, wherever uncle goes, I will definitely follow. Finally, their group increased, and again, they are people with high abilities. Don't miss Ryu's student, Uncle Tang, too. The Legends of Silent Night held a meeting because of the death of the thousand of death disciple Jin killed earlier. So the demon lords of Silent Night include the Black Wing Spear, the Axe of Destruction, the White Knight Wizard teacher, Hayun Sol, and finally the former leader of the Demon King, Silent Night Thousand. They talk about Silent Night's revival, but they say that all decisions will still be made by Silent Night's fourth person, the Night Master, who will soon be joining them. On the other hand, Central Heavenly is now filled with warriors from all over the place, so they can be recruited into an organization formed by Central Heavenly to deal with the rising Silent Night. Such organizations are called conquerors. They have authority in various places. Therefore, apart from being prestigious and raising a reputation, everyone was aiming for this position in this place of these thugs and strong thugs from all over. Then here too, Master Jin and head to the Central Heavenly, and will join them to this crowd. Now Central Heavenly is filled with delinquent thugs and the strongest warriors, which they want to join the new organization, and even the paths leading to Central Heavenly are also filled with them. Warriors seen gathering in tavern centers. Somewhere like a bar, a group of people saw that there was a woman who was quite beautiful. They initially thought that the woman was lost. But after someone came and greeted this lady, it was discovered that this lady was the successor of your current mountain sect. He earned the title of being one of the lowest heavens. Immediately they immediately thought, wrong person, if you want to disturb this woman. So the person who greeted this woman was one of the famous celestial dragons. He persuaded the woman to join him, but as she wanted to decline his invitation as well, it happened that a group of jinns entered the drinking establishment. This woman also pretended to have joined another group called the Suryu group, which was the jinn group. He took advantage of jinn's group. The young man from the blue force was very annoyed knowing that this mountain woman preferred trash from the genie group. After he pretended to be familiar with the jinn group, he apologized to the muwan jinn. He had to do that because it didn't take long for Uncle Tang to go to the toilet, but he was nudged by two strapping men and made him fall to the ground. Seeing his master fell at the bump, Ryu immediately jumped in front of the two people without further ado and attacked them. Quickly apologize to my master, said Ryu loudly and loudly. Where are your manners, you shout? But not long after that, Ryu was immediately hit with a combination punch from the two people. Everyone was whispering, wow. Those two people were the black and white twin bears, so these two were already famous warriors. He didn't care, even though he was constantly beaten by them. Review continues to rise and try to fight these two people. Indeed, Ryu's fighting technique is still an amateur, but his endurance is very great. Ryu screamed loudly, What kind of weak punch is this? Because I always get slaughtered by the sword of the north, so a blow like this doesn't feel like that anymore. All are shocked to hear the name of Utara Thread. Everyone tries to keep Jin's identity intact so they can get in anywhere easily, but Ryu easily figures out who the Jin is. 
Luckily, Si Ryu didn't know that Jin was the sect master of the Central Heavenly Alliance. Otherwise, he would have immediately been clamoring about being beaten up by the sect master of the Central Heavenly Alliance every day. But seeing Ryu's physical endurance, the crazy scholar said that he was indeed very talented in martial arts. But it's a shame because the opponent so far has been a genie. And it's a shame because of this nature that really needs to be fixed. The fight is still going on, but it looks like it's getting serious. Each of them already used deadly skills. Ryu has issued his poison boxing technique. Jin immediately took a stance to stop them from getting worse and stared at the twin opportunities with intimidating eyes so that they broke out in cold sweat. After they retreat, Uncle scolds Ryu for using the poison boxing technique without asking him first. Mountain shamans or immediately join the journey of the genie group. So it turns out that the twin bears who previously caused trouble were sent by the young man from the blue dragon whom he previously had a grudge against the mountain woman because she kept refusing her advances. The name of the youth from the blue dragon community is Zhang. She is known by the nickname Falcon Blade Fana and the mountain lady's name is Soryeon. Zhang finds out that the mountain lady is with quite famous groups like the Tan family, as well as the Sword of the North. He was even more angry. He had quite a grudge with Suryun because he kept refusing his invitation to join their community. Suddenly, a member of the lower sky called Hyung Gong came. Seems to be making use of it to destroy the northern sword and the mountain woman. This Hyung Gong is a power madman. He likes to measure other people's strength with himself by inviting them to fight. So he said that he only respects people who are stronger than him. The next day, this Hyun Gong and the group of mortal crosses approached the group of mountain girls. He provoked her to fight, as their statuses were about the same. Member of the Seven Low Heavens. So he wanted to test his strength, because his provocation hit his mother, so the battle was inevitable. The genie followed behind them as it looked like the mortal eagle might do something underhanded in the future. The fight begins. They bring out their respective mainstay skills. They both have high martial arts. Their fight was quite crazy until finally an ulti was issued and created a big enough explosion. The mortal eagle suffered an injury to his left hand, while the Hyung Gong lost part of his stomach as well as his hand. He dies before he collapses and dies, he says. I acknowledge you. The mortal eagle who saw the mountain woman fall because it seemed like she had lost quite a lot of blood and also she had a grudge against her. The mortal eagle also intends to execute six rayon. Not long after Jin came, the two twin bears immediately said, Wait, he is the sword of the north. Let's just go. Something's off about him. I have a bad feeling about him, the mortal eagle said. He doesn't come from a prominent family, and he's nothing more than an ordinary swordsman. His reputation is just an age. I'm a mortal eagle swordsman from a prominent sect, three ring sword sect. How dare you meddle in the affairs of the Azure Dragon community? Get out of the way. Jin also said, Are you the leader of Damsu Cheon? Knowing this act of yours, I know that he is a righteous warrior. I doubt whether this fits with his beliefs. He shouted, Shut up! Immediately, the three of them immediately attacked the genie together. Jin released his sword from its scabbard and sheathed it again with lightning speed, but the effect was a very crazy slash occurred, slashed the grass behind them. It's a shame their heads weren't cut off, but their top hair was cut and made them not move anymore. The three of them sat in disbelief. What really happened? How much level did they have with this northern swordsman? Who is he? He was silent as if his mouth was stuffed with garbage. Jin came to the mountain woman and carried her away. Sosion and Susitan are the children of the fifth chairman of Defend Light Off and Like Man, who has many wives. His mother was a servant of his father, so his mother often got pressure from other wives, and also this court got a lot of pressure from other children from his father, because the pressure felt by his mother had peaked and was unstoppable. Finally, his mother chose to burn some where they live, as well as set fire to himself. Unsol and Suchina, who thinks her mother is everything to her, now live alone. Before she died, her mother told them not to be weak like her. He must be a strong person. Since then, all their attitude and character changed. He devoted himself to becoming the strongest, beating up his older brothers who bullied him. Even at an early age, he had slaughtered many people until he was known as the Lonstar of Skype. 
eyes and purpose were truly gloomy and full of hatred for life. So he met a woman named Hieri Jung, and Socion continued to go all over the place to become the strongest and truly invincible, until finally his journey to the Central Heavenly Alliance. From a long break from his journey and wholly being destroyed by the Chaos Demon, ravaging the remaining ruins of the Central Heavenly Alliance, the Chaos Demon from Silent Night chased after him. Yunsol ran away from there, and he began to meditate to improve his skills again. At this moment finally finished from his long training and came back, he will do big things again this time. He asked about the Sword of the North. Had he heard any rumors about her? But apparently not, because he's a Goan man. In the Jin Mawoon group, scholars also remember about the Blue Power group, and one of them is also the person who left the most impression on his memory, one of which is the Hirium, because he went crazy a few years ago because of a strategic battle with magic. It uses the strategy passed down from its family, so that even the mad legend is badly beaten. She was the only one who gave him insults. After that, the crazy scholar was recruited directly by Yerium to enter their community. Meanwhile, Jin's group was currently heading to the Central Heavenly, and on board they met the Elder from the Cave Mountain. One of the Supreme Sects, too, his name is Shil Sung, and it turns out that this Seal Sung used to be a friend, and also a rival of Uncle Tan. But more and more they became rivals and enemies, not that they were enemies who killed each other, but enemies in terms of prestige. For example, when we met this time, with Uncle directly showing off his students who seemed to have high martial arts, he insulted Ryu who looks shabby and also weak. Well, for his only student, Uncle Tang who does have martial arts skills that are still low compared to Seal Sung's students. But after that, Uncle Tang gave encouragement because he doesn't need 1,000 students like them, if there is one student like Ryu with sincerity and high loyalty. At night, Jin sat on the watchtower of the ship. He said that his sword cries had not subsided until later he had to finish off the person who used the forbidden technique, namely Ten Blood of Woman by killing many women in the past, and the user of the forbidden technique was his child. Suddenly the genie's reverie was broken when he saw one of the Seal Sung students below who was hiding to drink wine. Maybe there is a rule not to drink wine, so he hides to drink. It is not his right to interfere in other people's affairs, said the genie, and the genie went to sleep. The next day, the student that Jin saw last night died horribly from his bodily injuries. It was a fatal slash. The chairman was annoyed because the student died horribly. The genie and the mad scholar giving comments. The mad scholar started to analyze the incident in less than a minute. He could immediately conclude who was the culprit. He says that the culprit is one of their students too. Do not accept that considered. But Monitor says that he swears to guarantee the credibility of genie and mad scholar. The scholar said the reason was because of that the alcohol that stuck with the person and the slash mark on the victim was also caused by a left-handed sword user. Jin added that at night he saw the dead person drinking alcohol with a very strong odor, so that alcohol also sticks with the perpetrator while only one person has both of the criteria earlier, he is named Miowo. Feeling unable to explain anything, he ran away. It turns out that the murder had been planned for ten years and could be uncovered in a matter of minutes. While running away, Jin catches him, but instead he kills himself. Seeing two students die, he couldn't hold back his sadness and anger, so the devil inside him woke up. He goes crazy. Jin tried to hold it in, but it wasn't enough the usual way. So the genie had to take out his sword. Jin pulls Sil Sung and throws him in the air because with this madness he can hurt other people. Below, when he was in the air, he let out his blossom technique, the 32nd technique of metal. However, his opponent was Jin. Instantly, the sword held by Seelsung was destroyed by the genie, and the genie slammed Seelsung so that he entered the deep sea. After that, passed out. When he realized, Seelsung asked Uncle Tang, Can you tell me something about this? He did completely lose consciousness before. With the help of medicine from Uncle Tang, it was discovered that he had a tattoo hidden on his chest. Whereas actually having entered the mountain ten years ago, he had never come out of there at all so most likely the tattoo was already on his chest before he joined their clan. The mad scholar instantly realized that there was an organization sending them for some purpose. Permit said that this two-headed demon tattoo reminded him of the forbidden art blood. The chief apologized to Jin Muan for showing the bad side of Mount Hua sect. On the other hand, he himself ended up being very jealous of the Tang disciple. 
even though alone he is very caring and very sincere to his master. Let's go home, kids, said Sealsung to the other students, turning to the White Dragon Trading Company. The White Dragon Trading Chief thanked everyone for successfully carrying out their mission. But the head of the Iron Brigadier said that if you want to thank Deeper, it should be to the genie because they would not have been able to survive without the help of a genie. But now Jin has come from circulation and hard to find. Uncle Huang and Munjuk went to retrain respectively. They are determined to be very strong. The Central Heavenly Alliance, where a person who has the most legendary illusion technique and his fighting ability, is still very mysterious. He was the brain of Central Heavenly and the person most responsible for the destruction of the Central Heavenly Alliance all those years ago. That person can see everything, meaning he has visions based on the moon, stars, and solar system. He sees a mysterious force disturbing the peace of the stars. Actually, this ability has also been shown by the mad scholar. He watched the sky to find out about it. Then this person who knew everything said that previously, the Central Heavenly Alliance had been believed to be destroyed to its roots. But now the light of the Central Heavenly Alliance was shining again with a faint light. The nickname of this person is the All-Knowing Priest of the West Gate, first one of the Nine Heavens. They saw the state of the Central Heavenly forming the conquering organization. With the return of Silent Night, they wanted to turn this news into profit as well. So the lodging and food in the Central Heavenly Alliance would definitely soar, and the only ones who could reap like this would be the actions of the omniscient priests. The mad scholar said to himself, he said it looks like I will fight that person later. So the priestess of the nine heavens possessed terrifying illusory powers and strategies, just like the mad scholar. But it doesn't say that he is not good at fighting either. The mad scholar said that usually a distinguished family has a private residence in the central heavenly, and should the Tambun poison family be no exception. So we shouldn't bother looking for lodging anymore, he said. Then Uncle Tang replied, yes, that's how it is. But even though our place is not as big as other families, so don't hesitate. Come on. They were taken to the Tang family's private residence, and Jin told Jin Muan to go in first because he wanted to take a walk in Central Heavenly first. There are things the genie has to do first. He said Jin was looking for something. He looked left and right, and finally he found a sign, namely a black cloth hanging in front of the door. He knocked. Someone came out and said we are closed. Jin introduced himself as Northern Sword and enumerated the cipher with some hesitation. The cipher was the darkest moonlight. He practiced what the chief iron brigadier did when he entered the Black Moon Branch headquarters. Hearing the password, Jin was welcome to enter. He met an old man and that grandpa crossed paths with a genie. Then she said a man who looked sincere. Jin came in and met someone. Hearing his voice, Jin immediately realized that he was the branch head. He moved and he was the temporary branch head in this region. The genie looked at him suspiciously. He didn't feel comfortable being stared at like that, and he said, Why are you looking at me like that? You think I followed you this far? The chairman of the Central Heavenly Alliance who is about to destroy this entire world order is absolutely mandatory to watch over. Moreover, they are the largest information brokers. Jin asked how Chung In was doing. He said that he was being assigned. Although exposing his identity is not a trivial matter, because Chung In is the highest class spy, even so, it was only natural that his identity be exposed because the person who uncovered it was also extraordinary, namely the head of the legendary sect. Mai asked the genie, what is the need here? Jin handed him a wad of gold and said he wanted them to find someone. The person's name is Weasel. Weasel is the first sword Jin devoted himself to when Jin was a child back then. He promised to return to the genie and the genie returned to look for his wandering sword because Jin's request was relatively easy, providing additional information to Jin. He said that Elder Yun Jon Hoa had left the sword fortress and he was heading to the Central Heavenly. One of the former heavenly pillars who betrayed him and he was one of Deedon Cord who was most responsible for that incident. His sword skills were also insane. Even his abilities could not be compared to Jon Wu. The genie asked, why did he come here? Mai also replied, I'm not sure. Do you want me to find out? Jin answered and left. No need it seems that I will meet him soon. Mei said, I understand why he likes her. He is an elusive and interesting person. Mei opened her shutter curtain and said, 
the heir descendant of the legendary sect of the Central Heavenly Alliance Jin Muwan. He's double-edged depending on how we handle it. He can be a very big disaster, or can also be a shining hope. Jin was pensive, and suddenly an old man who had been met at the Black Moon headquarters came. The geezer immediately said, Oh, interesting. Do you yearn for immortal life or emperor life? This body is the body of the immortal and the body of Caesar. Jin said to himself, I can't feel his teeth at all. Who is this grandpa? Suddenly the grandfather opened his disguise face, which turned out to be a grandmother. This grandmother offered her wine drink to Jin while saying, Don't worry, this drink is not poisoned, and I also don't stick my mouth when drinking the young people gathered here. Busy with joining conquerors, so they neglect about the beauty in front of them. But you're different, right? That's why I offer this drink so you can enjoy this beauty. While drinking, but if you don't want to, I don't mind either. Jin drank the drink, and Grandma kept talking about the displacement of nature. But Jin didn't stop drinking it until the grandmother told him, Hey kids, drink slowly. We have to save the drink if you want to enjoy the night. Suddenly a group of people came, so the grandmother immediately said, It seems enough to get here. He jumped down throwing the sake bottle to Jin. We will meet again, he said. Jin said that he still couldn't feel the grandmother's kai. I believe he has already reached the spiritual absolute level, but somehow I feel like I've met him before. Suddenly a group of young people came, and the crowd shouted at Jin to get out of here because they were going to have a meeting at this place, so the genie intended to leave without wanting to make a fuss again. It turned out that those people were the Blue Dragon community. They are backwards black and white twin bears, and also these are not dead yet. Even though when he dueled with six afternoons before, one arm broke and his body was partially destroyed. But apparently, he is still alive. Saw Jin with frightened eyes. But Ryu immediately came to Jin because he himself didn't really know dogs. He asked Jin, Where is that jerk woman? Jin remains silent. Gon Hyun asks why the three people behind him seem so scared of Jin. Who are you? Then came another person named the Southern Sword. He also joined in with Gong Hyun to urge the genie. Jin remained silent until finally the two of them immediately attacked Jin together, seeing that there was no other way. The three people who had been silent before also attacked Jin. In their minds, even though he was the Sword of the North, it was impossible to defeat five martial artists at once. Jin started to move. He punched and beat all five with a swing of his bare fists. The southern sword was slashed flat by the genie using his fist until it was bruised. Because their annoyance was getting more violent, Jin said, Oh, how stupid are you guys? Jin took out his sword and almost cut off Gong Hyun's head. After that, his slash almost cut through the southern swordsman's neck. They fell silent as they realized how big the difference in their levels was. The twin bears ran like wildfire while Mun Ho was scared to the point of peeing his pants. Jin went away and left them. He said I didn't kill you because in central heavenly killing someone would have big problems. But if you are still not satisfied, then I will not hesitate to finish off every drop of blood from all of you. They all can only be silent a thousand languages. Turning to Ryu, who was practicing poison martial techniques with Uncle Tang, he had already mastered other poison techniques. Ryu shouted at Jin, who was watching him. You see that, Jin? I'll chase you in an instant. He said he immediately got angry with Uncle Tang because his student was nothing. But the genie doesn't pay attention to the serious chatter. Jin talks and consults the mad scholar about what he went through today. Starting from meeting a martial master whose QE couldn't be sensed even a little to meeting a bunch of trash. The scholar directly said to Jin, All right, come on, there's a place you have to go with me. Now changing the place of one of the most important places in Central Heavenly, namely the Central Heavenly Administration Office. The place is supervised by a minister called Quan Deseo, the minister who is in charge of looking after and overseeing the internal affairs of the Central Heavenly Alliance. Therefore, he holds a very important influence on the future of the Central Heavenly Alliance and makes him the single most important figure in the whole martial world. Mount Hua's elder Chil Sung came to visit this minister, reporting the two-headed skull logo issue that made his sect lose credibility some time ago. But after this, Seal Sung came home. Some people came. The people who came were very close to the minister. Until the minister, whose temperament was always serious, laughed many times because he was happy to be visited by his old friend. He said, 
How are you? Are you back in your right mind? No wonder you're still alive. His friend said, I'm getting crazy now. Why come here, old friend? So I need three things. Firstly, a strategic map regarding Hubei province. Secondly, any blueprints regarding the Central Heavenly Alliance. And lastly, any important information regarding the sect of the Central Heavenly Alliance. A killer sect called the Ghostbuster Sect. A sect that earned its reputation through contract killings of the cruel ones. This time, they got a very large number of jobs. Jobs and requests for murder were carried out by Munho. He was very angry because of the previous incident which made him wet his pants because he was frightened by the genie. Therefore, he hired a professional killer to kill Jin. He said on the other hand, already three days Jin and Mad Scholar were in the central administrative center of heaven, continuing to consult with the administration master in that place named Jiang Dai. And again, Jiang Dai Seo is also a little friend of the crazy scholar, so he didn't put it at all. Do you have any suspicions about this friend of yours? He shared all the information regarding the Central Heavenly Alliance and all the information related to the Central Heavenly to the Mad Scholar. Zhang Dai Seo's friend is one of the smartest people in the Central Heavenly. It is possible that he is on par with the Mad Scholar. After three days, they wanted to say goodbye. J. D. I. Seong asked, By the way, who is this person? Is he your bodyguard? Crazy Scholar laughs. You're just asking now? I'm sure you've heard the rumors. He's the Sword of the North. Oh, Sword of the North, huh? Said Dai Xiong. Then silence for a moment. Immediately, his facial expression changed drastically. He instantly remembered with the previous three requests from Mad Scholar. One of them is requesting all information from the Central Heavenly Alliance and Northern Sword. Don't tell me what exactly are you planning? Scholar Gilang replied, Uh, finally you realize, yes. Since childhood, we have always spent time together. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in the central heavenly lower floors so pointlessly? Why not? Occasionally, we don't chase our dreams. I'm not going to force you to our destination, but I also want you to think about our offer. I'm going first thanks for all your help. Damn you, crazy bastard. He had already given all the classified information to the mad scholar. Ha Yun Sol and a group of merchants who one of them liked Ha Yun Sol were eating at this guy's stall distributing meat to Ha Yun Sol's plate until his friend said, The man asked Ha Yun Sol, Why does he like lamb? Ha Yun Sol answered, I don't know. Every time I eat lamb, a memory somehow comes to mind. Apart from that, suddenly one of the brothers from the person who had been slaughtered by Ha Yun Sol appeared. His brother wanted revenge. An explosion suddenly occurred. The person who liked earlier resisted the blast wave with his body until part of his body and hands were destroyed, and he died really liking Yunsol. He asked, Are you okay? All memories come up again, namely when Jin used to protect a Yunsol. When confronted with the demon of chaos, he immediately went into a serious mode. She turned into a white night witch. Jin Muan was surprised that he was useful enough to kill a man who liked it. He was immediately cut off his head until severed. The attack came at that moment. The troops saw and immediately realized that the person in front of him was the legendary White Knight Witch. Even though Ha Yun Sol was the student of the White Knight Magician, the real Demon King, because of the disc white hair. Also because of its unique aura, that's why they realized because what was in front of them was Silent Knight. Then they can't close their eyes and just leave. There is a procedure that must be done by them. Clashes between ensued. Jin Muan, who was eating with the crazy scholar, they talked a little about their next plan, where the mad scholar says that the job of a scholar is to prepare the master's path as smoothly as possible and do the cleaning at the end. But after their conversation, suddenly, there was an ambush under their table. They had been besieged with a cult of assassins hired by Munho before. A cult of killers called Ghost Buster, or Ghost Killing. The genie said that he wasn't aware of their movements, so they must be skilled people. Mad Scholar directly analyzed the number of enemies, which was around 80 people, when viewed from the total outside and inside the building. Jin started to slash at them one by one, but there were too many of them, so he was pushed too. Moreover, he has to protect the Mad Scholar behind him, whereas the Mad Scholar had to make preparations beforehand, and use the mediation of an object if he wanted to use an illusion. Only one person can perform illusions without preparation, namely an illusion legend named Munwa, and this one-of-a-kind ability was passed down to his grandson, 
who is none other than a hero.